students welcome once again in the class of basic civil engineering so in last lecture we are learning planning of residential building so i think two planning principles we have learned and next yet to see so today we will continue with the remaining planning principles i am mr s s ogle assistant professor civil engineering department in last lecture we have covered the aspect and prospect now we'll continue with the privacy so the privacy is one of the most important consideration in planning of all types of general and residential building in particular privacy is of two types first is privacy of all parts of the building with reference to the surrounding buildings street and byways this can be achieved by growing plants trees and also by keeping windows high enough with respect to the roads or ground nearby and second is privacy of one room from another that is bedroom kitchen bathroom etc this can be attained by carefully positioning positioning of doors and openings of shutters the shutters should open in such a way that person entering the room should not get uh, should get the minimum view as we can see in this figure so this is the opening of the shutter in this way that person entering in the in the room will get the minimum view then for maximum privacy such as bedroom single shutters are better than the double shutters the privacy is of great importance in bedrooms water closets urinals and bathrooms etc bedroom should never be placed at the entrance bathroom and wc should be should have independent access and privacy is not only for above purpose but for library study room and prayer hall, hall may be located in a particular part of the building where the, the silence should be maintained or seclusion should be there so this thing should be taken care of while planning so here you can see uh, the three examples so in first case we have the double shutter door and which is placed at the center so the person outside the room will get the entire view in the room so this room don't have almost no privacy is there in this case again the observer or the person who is outside getting the most of uh, viewed the most of part of the room so moderate privacy there and in case of this thing we have the maximum privacy but uh, i want to add something nowadays in the uh, we have the culture of the french doors or the bigger windows so by providing curtains or by providing goggle goggle glass we can get the more privacy so these things also should be taken care of also by increasing the height of compound wall also we can get the privacy so in this way privacy is the one of the most important factor or the planning principle while planning the building now the roominess it refers to the effect achieved by making the best of small portions of room by deriving maximum benefits from minimum dimensions it appears to be simple at first but really difficult to achieve a rectangular room is relatively bigger than a square room of a same area it is also found more convenient from the utility point of view as here we can see we have the two rooms here which is of 4 by almost 4 and this is 4 by of 3.2 so this is the square hall and this is the uh, sorry this is 5 by 3.2 this is the rectangular hall so both are having the same areas almost the same areas but here you can see we can use only this much part of the room that is this 2 by almost 4 and here we have this 3 by 3.2 so this area can be utilized for other purpose and it gives a room of uh, a feel of bigger room even both room have the same area so uh, 
the roominess can be achieved by this way so for a rectangular room of length to width ratio should be between 1.2 as to 1 and 1.5 as to 1 the ratio of 2 as to 1 or more will cause the tunnel effect and create bad feeling which should be avoided so while planning the rectangular room also we have to keep this thing into mind that is the ratio between width and depth or the width and breadth should be between this 1.2 as to 1 to 1.5 as to 1 and it should not be more than 2 as to 1 in any case because it causes or it will look like a tunnel so that uh, that create a bad feeling and that should be avoided also this is applicable in case of height also that height of the room should be sufficient according to the size of the room so if you provide a more height then again it will not uh, looks good it will create a tower like effect that it will not even though room is bigger it will not give the feel of bigger room because of the more height so that should be again avoided so this is about the roominess now the grouping grouping means arrangement of various rooms in the layout in such a fashion that all rooms are placed with reference to their function and in due proximity to each other the building consists of different unit or rooms in general that is we have the kitchen we have the hall or the living room or the drawing room we have the bedrooms we have the wc we have the bathrooms then we have the study rooms library gyms and so many rooms are there so according to their function and their connection with each other so each room or unit has to perform a certain function or functions and there is also some sort of sequence in between them so we have to take care of all these things while planning and this is called as a grouping so bad grouping lacks in a privacy actually uh, in grouping we have to place the rooms which are dependent on each other that is generally people like to sit in a veranda as such living room should naturally next to it so the living room and veranda also uh, make uh, keep in uh, keep nearer to each other then dining room must be close to the kitchen at the same time kitchen should be away from the drawing hall or living room otherwise the bad smell and smoke will cause nuisance for the occupants actually uh, in our country uh, we have to we are actually providing this kitchen and drawing room nearer so that uh, the the uh, while providing some uh, service to the kitchen uh, from the kitchen to the drawing room should be easy and even the uh, from the kitchen we have we can see the hall or the entrance way so that uh, it will be easy for the uh, housemaid to keep eye on the main door then sanitary arrangement should be adjacent to the bedroom but away from the kitchen dining room there should not be there should be independent access to the sanitary units and one more thing the uh, wc and bath should have uh, should nearer to each other so that uh, they are depending on uh, or their functions are depending on each other then the kitchen should be located that the housewife who is busy in the major part of the day can keep the watch through window so uh, as i told you earlier so here you can see in the figure the w1 on the children playing is front in front yard and also entry to the intruder so here you can see this w1 is there this is the kitchen here and this is the living room this is the sitting arrangement here we have the passage or the door to the 
this particular living room so from here this w1 window when this housewife is working from here she can keep eye on this particular sit out or the entrance door so that becomes easy for her uh, when she is busy in the kitchen and if she is alone at home it can be easy for her to keep eye on the main door so here again you can see this bathroom and wc those are nearer to each other and again those are nearer to the bedroom and same way they are away from the kitchen again the kitchen is nearer to the dining room so this way the grouping can be done and hall is placed centrally so that we have uh, access from all the areas actually uh, some different alternatives also are also there and you can plan in some different way also so these are the things coming under the grouping now the circulation circulation is the access or the internal movement is provided circulation is of two types one is the horizontal circulation and the other is the vertical circulation if the movement is for the same floor and may be from one room to another or within room itself then it is called as a horizontal circulation the horizontal circulation can be achieved by providing passages corridors lobbies verandas and halls so the requirement for this corridor passage and lobbies are it should be straight short sufficiently lighted well ventilated to provide a comfort convenience and efficiency and safety and then desirable horizontal circulation should be short straight and independent passages it helps to provide a privacy to the room so these things should be taken care of so here you can see the different cases of circulation so we have the three cases in first case we have the door over here and here which is in between hall so that it is called as a bad circulation because while people moving from this path they are disturbing the people who are sitting in this particular hall then second this is a kind of better than this so it is at the sideways one is door is from here and another is at other end so this way they cannot disturb the people sitting in this particular area but same way we are in same way we are occupying this much area from the room so another alternative can be there that we can provide a circulation in this way also so that this particular room will have less consumption of the space and the third case is of we have the circulation from this particular size so that we will not disturb any part of this room only and the less consumption of space is also there so it, this is the case of the best circulation another thing i want to add uh, in case of the uh, passages or the corridors it should be avoided to pro, uh, get any obstruction even in case of the window shutters or uh, the door shutter those should not be open in the passage so that the accident should not happen so this thing also should be taken care of now the vertical circulation the vertical circulation is the movement from one room to another floor one floor to another floor it can be achieved by means of stairs lifts and escalators these should be easily ac accessible from the entrance and various room without intruding the privacy so if you observe in every case the privacy is taken care of even in the grouping we have seen and even in this case also we are taking care of privacy they should also be properly lighted and ventilated the stairs should be sufficiently wide with strong balusters or parapets and handrails on the both sides so this is the cases of circulation with staircase this is outside and this is 
inside so here you can see we have the veranda then passage is there and by obstructing anyone we can go directly to the stair and we can go on the another floor and this case where the external staircase has been provided so here we have to move outside the building and then we have to go to this way and go to the upper floor so this is not a good circulation but uh, in some cases uh, when you think in our particularly in our areas in most of the cases these things has been provided because they have some commercial purpose that above floor should be uh, given by uh, for rent or etc so because of those conditions those are called as a practical consideration because of those conditions these things are we have to include these things sometimes in the planning as per the requirement of the owner or the client so this thing should be uh, depending on entirely on the client or the requirement of the client now the furniture requirement the requirement of furniture depend on the type of building the number of persons using the room and the function of the room therefore the requirement of furniture their sizes etc is an important consideration because the furniture will decide the size of room please note this is the important thing because i observed in case of furniture requirement uh, the students get confused basically here you can see the requirement of the furniture their sizes etc is an important consideration because the furniture will decide the size of the room so this is the important statement the furniture de will decide the size of room to make the best use of the available space in the room minimum furniture should be provided so here as you can see every room has this its function so in kitchen we need to cook and in say, same way in hall we used to sit chit chat or we have to serve the guest or having the chit chat with the guest then in bedroom we are, we have to sleep we have to relax so every room has its function and for that function every room require its furniture uh, normally in case of kitchen we require the ota then so many utensils are there ovens then burners so many things are there uh, sometimes if uh, kitchen in addition with the dining room we have to provide a dining table or for separate dining room we have to provide a dining table and uh, chairs over there then we have to provide a cupboard for the uh, storage of utensils then storage of the groceries etc so these are the in case of kitchen same way in case of hall we have to provide a chairs tea table coffee table then sofas are there then some furniture for the uh, tv or uh, to keep something so these things are there then in bedroom we have to provide a bed a closet or cupboard even for the working chairs are also there so every room had, has its requirement and to fulfill that requirement it should provide a sufficient furniture and every furniture has its own size depending upon the uh, the average size of the uh, human that is in our country we have the average height of the particular male is about to 5 6 5 7 and uh, average height of the woman that is up to 5 to 5 2 so according to which everything that is uh, that has been desired that is size of the cupboard size of the bed size of the chair size of the uh, dining table etc so everything has been designed according to that way so to accommodate that size of furniture in particular room we have to provide a room size accordingly so even by accommodating uh, accommodating that particular furniture there should be enough space for the circulation so those things we need to taken care of 
so this is particularly the furniture requirement so to make a use of best use of available space the minimum furniture should be provided so at the time of planning the proper position of the furniture such as sofa chairs tables television wall units in living room beds easy chairs cupboard dressing table in bedroom dining table with chairs in dining room rack fridge in kitchen etc is to be decided with the proper circulation and roominess the placement of furniture will finalize the location of door windows closets electrical switches in the room so these things are required while finalizing the uh, doors and windows and the electrical switches because the doors and windows and even the switches should not interfere while functioning or the functioning of these furniture or the basic requirement of these furniture so this thing we should taken care of while the planning that is door window position then electric switch positions and the particular size of the room with the proper circulation so this is all for this lecture and remaining uh, planning principle will continue in the next lecture so thank you